My name is Wilfried Pimenta. I work as a business development director in IOTA. I'm super excited to, to present this, uh, especially the last part. So hang on to, to the very last slides. Um, IOTA is a very new player in the distributed ledger space. People think we are a blockchain, but we're not a blockchain. Uh, we are a distributed ledger without blocks and without chain, and uh, we enable new possibilities that has a real life implications. Um, I put my contact details here. Uh, I may not be able to stick around too long after the presentation, so I'm happy to follow up uh, by email afterwards. Uh, many of you have heard about blockchain as a buzzword, as an enabler to, to Bitcoin technology, this digital, digital currency. So I'm not going to go into the details of blockchain. I hope some of you have dived into it especially because it is somehow misleading when we try to explain what IOTA does. Um, but a lot of people have recognized the, the potential associated with blockchain, uh, and we kind of follow a bit of, of that wave, but we have a slightly different tuning. Uh, what the vision that carries behind Bitcoin and blockchain is this idea of moving from a centralized world to a distributed world. Uh, today, actually, Bitcoin is probably not in the distributed world, it tends to be a bit decentralized, but actually the promise of Bitcoin is not completely fulfilled because there's about five big mining pools located in China that actually sustain the whole distributed network. So we're not completely there. At IOTA, we would like to think that we, we enable the full distribution. Blockchain has been enabling a lot of fintech innovation. Uh, a lot of money has been poured into this, a lot of banks came together to innovate and actually without us knowing it we start to have it in our hands. But there's still some work to be done because for a business point of view there's, there are some uncertainties and some, some volatility, it's not completely for free, so there are some barriers. Uh, interestingly, the topic of distributed ledger has made up its way all the way to the EU Commission. So, you know, the bureaucrats of Europe actually has developed that language, which is really exciting for the innovators because we can start to have a very different dialogue. Uh, actually, now the, when we think about the politics of all this, the, the barriers tend to, to lie at the national level. We need to educate our national key stakeholders. So, we hope to work together with the EU Commission to spread the message and the potential that will come out of this revolution. Um, IOTA comes in in, uh, in the recognition that if you combine blockchain with the surge of IoT devices, there's a new kind of landscape of possibilities that, that arises where you have machine-to-machine -machine payments that will work in the background. Security of things can be enabled through blockchain-like technology. And yeah, automation. Things can happen in the background without us being into the loop. That's the promise, at least, that blockchain has. Yeah. Unfortunately, the team behind IOTA recognized that was back already in 2013 that this promise is very unlikely to be delivered using blockchain technology as such. There's just intrinsic limitations related to the blockchain. And we see it today when we follow up with Bitcoin or Ethereum type of technology. There's latencies, there's fees, it just doesn't scale. Uh, when you put those kind of technology in the context of IOT, uh, those IoT devices are going to communicate in a different way. They're not going to send a package of money every month. It's just going to communicate very often, real time, sending small data packages. And if you have an associated cost to that, it's going to cost a lot, even though if it's small. Uh, Bitcoin, for instance, if you use Bitcoin today for the piece of chocolate, you're likely to pay more in transaction fees than the actual chocolate. So we need to go to this level of micropayments, and that has been the focus of the IOTA team. So, back in 2014, they actually decided to look at this landscape, reconsider how to approach the topic, and actually got rid of a lot of the fundamentals of blockchain, but keeping in mind the distributed ledger to promise. And they came up with a concept called the Tangle. I'm not going. I'm going to go too much into the detail. A lot of this is explained in the white paper, and I'd like to go up to the point of what are the implications. But I invite you to go and check out the white paper. 
the idea is that we actually still we, we remove the constraint built by blocks and the chain of blocks. Uh, and we follow a slightly different in architecture. And the result of this from a ledger perspective is you obtain a real-time, secure, and no transaction fee ledger. And that's quite something. So there's absolutely no transaction fees whatsoever when two connected devices are going to trade. There's a module related to our ledger called the IOTA token that actually enables this digital currency that we utilize between connected devices. It's highly scalable in the Internet of Things. So some of the big attributes that we have tried to explain to the different industrial partners we, we collaborate with are no transaction fees as a comparison to Bitcoin or Ethereum that has a, a price tag and a volatility attached to utilizing the ledger. Here there's no transaction fees. While blockchain basically doesn't scale, the more users you have, the more latency you get. With IOTA, it's, it's completely different. It just scales. Uh, it goes faster the more participants you get into the network. And finally, you, you can get some offline transactions. We call it partition tolerance feature, which means you don't need to be synced to internet all the time. You can actually create different clusters that can disconnect from the main tangled network and reconnect again, and things still manage to, to work together. The vision behind IOTA is, is to enable this whole IoT-driven world. Uh, the cars that will buy electricity peer-to-peer, -peer, at some point, will have cars that are self-driving. So nobody's here to pay the electricity anyway. So the car needs to pay by itself. So we work on car e-wallets so that the cars can actually purchase electricity from EV smart chargers that needs to accept digital currency. So we work on both ends. This whole world is is what we refer to as the machine economy that is starting to take shape. And some industrial companies start to see this big potential. The IOTA Foundation is, is a non-profit organization. It emerges from the computing world, a lot of the core developers. It's mainly led by David Sonstebe in Norway and David Gina that is based in Berlin. And the non-profit foundation is, has its headquarters in Berlin. But the whole team is very distributed. Uh, across the world. And we have like hardcore mathematicians, and cryptographers, and blockchain pioneers on the left side, combined with more senior industry leaders, combining you know, footprints in different industries from clean tech to digital identity, healthcare, legal practice, and so on. So we recognize that this is, tends to be you know, disruptive. We don't want it to be negatively disruptive. It's positively disruptive. But there's a, an exercise to do to actually bring that value to the world by translating this complicated stuff to a leadership that can see the value creation out of that. So this is mainly the role of the, the people on the right side. So we work together and we're, the team is growing fairly fast. Uh, we've launched different initiatives, we created an ecosystem fund so that the developers can start innovating. Uh, it's about 10 million dollars plus. Uh, and we're reviewing all the different startups and developers that have reached out to us. So we will get that work started pretty soon. The kind of innovation, you know, high level, the paradigm shifts that we, we're looking at <coughs> are typically the new sharing economy, where with IOTA you can start seeing any kind of an object as a service and you can share the ownership. And the machine economy, where the um, connected devices start to trade. I'll give some examples afterwards. And then, of course, there's the my data aspect, where we can help securing the data flow. We can help the privacy elements using some of the modules we have in the IOTA. Uh, and we can even monetize some of the data transfer from peer to peer or M to M. <coughs> uh, we start to work with quite a lot of corporations and institutions. Um, some are very heavy in the IoT transformation, so companies like Bosch are really quite deep into it. Energy, which is the German uh, energy utility, uh, are looking into how to transform their own industry to a kind of utility 2.0, where they need to refocus on end users and the utility of electricity uh, rather than just supplying power. So we work with those to, to investigate all those mobility services around car wallets and EV smart chargers and so on. Um, a lot of different work and also contribution from um, academia and research. 
So in Berkeley, in Antenu, UCL in London, Imperial College, uh, we give access to our technology. Because we are non-profit and our technology is actually open source, we are fairly transparent and a lot of people can innovate with IOTA and ask questions and even refine actually the, the code. Um, examples of stuff we enable are, for instance, prosumers. <coughs> transactive grids. So at some point, maybe some of us has actually solar panels on our rooftops. At some point in time, you're not at home, you have a surplus of energy captured from your house and you want to sell this electricity not to the utility, but to your neighbor. And this type of new paradigm in the energy sector has been already cracked a bit from earlier blockchain. But in order to scale this model, you need technologies like IOTA that allows these transactions to happen at zero costs in real time. So those kind of things are very relevant and we started to innovate with a few utilities from Germany in that model. Um, connected mobility, so this is very exciting. I referred to it uh, a bit earlier where we look at data integrity. You know, our vehicles are actually connected vehicles packed with IoT and you don't want the car to be hacked. So you need to have a degree of cyber security and we can bring that data integrity layer Car, e-wallets, EV smart chargers, and we also start to look at things like smart supply chain, where the car needs to be handled from shipping and logistics, for instance. And there's actually great benefits of bringing all those assets into the digital realm in order to optimize different supply chain. Uh, supply chain, yeah, so it doesn't apply only to the smart uh, mobility. There's a lot of relevant things to look into. Um, in OG, so this is a bit more technical, but you know, you can see that when you get into the digital realm and you can combine it with other, let's say, digital identity mechanism, I'll come back to it afterwards, uh, you can see that for industry, you can take a full copy of the asset in the digital realm. So digital twin, it's called, and once you get there, you can start to manage your asset in a very different way. I'm located in Oslo, in Norway, and you know, we have a lot of oil and gas platforms, super sophisticated things. You can envision at some point that all those kind of equipment on those platforms will have a digital ID, a tag, and we can start to follow the whole process from design, to operation, and maintenance in the digital realm and ensure data integrity, make sure that things are actually properly followed up. Um, so Inogi is looking at this together with IORA and some other partners within the blockchain space. And they actually communicate quite a lot openly, so you can follow them and there's a link down there. You can read about it. And IOTA, so in the my data realm, the kind of things we see is that there's a convergence, my data, between Internet of Things, distributed ledger where we come from, and machine learning. When you combine those kind of disruptive technologies, you can see how they're going to serve the purpose of my data. So it's actually, from our end, we see that, of course, it introduces a lot of new technologies, a bit complicated to handle, so we need to work also on the ecosystem and educating all the different stakeholders. I'll talk actually, I have another talk in another session after, where we'll explain, I'll take the MyData model and I'll apply it to the healthcare, so I'll talk a bit about how we envision building up the ecosystem in that context. Some of the big fish in the world of blockchain or distributed ledgers are associated with digital identity. In our case, we do not pretend to do all the stack of technology and applications, but we can certainly deliver a very efficient thin layer just above internet Then other parties can start leveraging to develop new digital identity protocols. And we started to, to do some work, and uh, all this is an ecosystem approach. We can't do it by ourselves. I think uh, you know, pure startups that aim at delivering these digital identity solutions are going to have a bit of a challenge. Uh, simply in terms of governance and why one private player has the right to deliver this type of social <coughs> solution, that's going to be difficult. So there's a lot of role we see in, in like cooperative setups to find a solution and of course non-profit foundation has a good role to play to build the vision team. So we're involved in, uh, in different ones, the Trusted IoT Alliance involves Cisco and Bosch and some others and we have also an initiative driven by Microsoft with quite a lot of, of players in there. Um, we also look at issues related to the digital identity of people, and that's 
I mean, at home here in the Nordics may not be the biggest pain, but of course in emerging countries that's certainly a big pain, especially in times where you have migration and some disasters happening civil society. So we need to kind of try to figure out how we get paste, give those people some identity so they can actually use some utilities to help them go through those phases. And we work with, uh, we're starting to work with different uh, people. Uh, John Edge, as John uh, joined the, the foundation, he's the chairman, founder of ID2020, and he brings that level of expertise from an identity perspective. Uh, we started to collaborate on sustainable development goals and different NGOs like Refuge Unite that brings together uh, refugees from disaster zone. And there's a component, of course, that could be related to digital identity, but that's, that's not the only thing we're doing, of course, with them. Uh, WIN is a recent initiative, was launched at the MPF uh, Island. Um, the World Identity Network is funded by a former World Bank uh, senior manager with the aim to give an identity um, to all the people in the emerging markets used, uh, utilizing blockchain technology. So, so we are happy to support those like, initiatives. Um, I wanted to introduce something I'm really excited and our partners are here to, to take the microphone afterwards. So we've decided to, to team up with Evernim. Evernim is, is the technology company uh, feeding the technology uh, fostered um, by the Sovereign uh, Foundation. And uh, we see complementary in how we can actually work together. Uh, IOTA providing this very thin layer just above internet and that can be harvested basically by Evernim and, and the Sovereign Foundation. Uh, this is a good, becoming a very interesting topic. Um, people are looking at the digital identity of things from an industrial point of view, but we also have uh, stakeholders like the EU Commission and some others that are trying to address the potential of utilizing distributed ledgers for managing our identities. So this is something we'll, uh, we're going to mature all together. So the takeaways from, uh, from my talk is that the digital identity of things and people are going to be key enabler actually to, to human-centric innovation. Uh, it's also bringing those digital identities uh, that are in our Fitbits and so on that we can bring together to serve our reporters. Um, IOTA provides a trusted open source digital backbone for a lot of those protocols, so we're happy to work like we're going to do with Evernim. Um, and we want to bring those things to, to real life solutions. So, because we are a bit special in the distributed ledger space, we're really scalable. We're going to push very quickly into pilots that can scale. So, we're trying to demystify the technology and bring those things to life, and we're happy to set up different partnerships. Um, yeah, and then basically, I'll, I'd like to hand the, the mic to, to Evanim and Domen. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you, Wilfred. Thanks. First of all, yeah. round of applause. <laughs>